Good morning. Let's try that again. Good morning. <laughs> Good to be in God's house. Let's stand together as we sing, My Faith Looks Up to Thee. Shall we stand? This morning it was pointed out to me, and I don't know if you noticed it or not, um, the chatter is back. Did you notice it this morning? That it, at, as we were gathering, everyone's talking just like we used to. And every time something happens that's just like what it used to be, I get excited. So uh, it's, a, it's a baby step, I know, but it, what a beautiful sound it was to hear everyone happy to see each other and in each other's presence. Um, if you would bow your head with me real quickly. God, we thank you. Thank you for a beautiful day to gather and to worship you. Thank you for the privilege of our being together. Um, pray that your Holy Spirit, that you've promised to, to those wherever two or more are gathered in your name, pray that your t Holy Spirit is here with us this morning, that you stir in our hearts and minds and souls, and pray that this worship would be pleasing in your sight. Thank you, and we ask these things in Christ's name. Amen.
If you have your Bibles, turn to the gospel according to Matthew, chapter 8, verses 5 through 13. This is a, a unique passage in that we, we, we would call it a, a miracle or a healing, because it is, it's a miracle. Um, but the miracle, interestingly enough, is not the focus of the passage. Um, hear God's word. When Jesus had entered Capernaum, by the way, Capernaum was Jesus' adult hometown. He was from, he was born in Bethlehem, he moved to Nazareth, but when his ministry started, he, he mostly hung out around Capernaum, which was on the north side of the Sea of Galilee, or the Galilee Lake. When, uh, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies home paralyzed and suffering terribly. And Jesus said to him, shall I come and heal him? Immediately Jesus answered, shall I come heal him? The centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. But just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell this one, go, and he goes. And I tell that one, come, and he comes. And I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed, and he said to those following him, truly I tell you, I have now not found anyone, anyone in Israel with such great faith. I say to you, that many will come from the east and the west and will take their places at the feast with Abraham. All right, and pause right there for just a second. Jesus is talking about Gentiles. When he says people will come from the east and people will come from the west, he's, he's telling them that it, this is not just for the Jews. People will come from the east and the west and will take their places at the feast of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the subjects of the kingdom will be thrown outside into the darkness where there will be weeping, weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, Go, let it be done just as you believed it would. And the servant was healed at that moment. This is God's word for God's people. Thanks be to God. Jesus fairly clearly demonstrates his power of healing. And while this story is remembered for the healing of the centurion servant, it is most important to notice that healing is not the main point of the, of the story. The healing itself is not center stage. We don't ever even meet the person who's healed. The attention is focused instead on the faith of the centurion a Roman soldier. Jesus immediately said yes. Would you heal my servant? Yes, take it to him, let's go. But the centurion continues, and Jesus marvels at the centurion's faith. The, the word used for marvel there is used in several other places. One example is in Matthew eight twenty seven when Jesus walked on the water the disciples marveled. The healing of a paralyzed man. Jesus <laughs> it's, so, it's normal and understandable that we would marvel at the miraculous power of Jesus Christ. But for Jesus to marvel at our faith would take some pretty strong faith. It also represents a paradigm shift in, in Jewish religion. So up to that point, inward faith was not a great big deal. At least not according to the Jews. External characteristics, in other words, 
who you are and how you behaved and how you acted. That was the most important thing in Judaism, following the rules. And Jesus is shifting that to whether or not you truly believe. If you have faith, it's the centurion's in, inward faith that has his servant healed. I find that interesting because it actually has nothing to do with the servant's faith whatsoever. At least as far as we know. The initial dialogue between Jesus and the centurion I think is significant as well. Centurion requests a healing for his servant. And Jesus replies, let's go. I'll, I'll heal him. Let's, take me to him. And Centurion dismisses that and says, Lord... I don't deserve you to be in my house. Just say the word. Because I know what that's like as a centurion. By the way, the reason they were called centurion is because they had a century of soldiers underneath them. They were in charge of a hundred soldiers. And so he was accustomed to when he said something, any one of those 100 soldiers would jump and go do whatever he asked them to do. So he understood what it meant to be a leader and to be in command. In this context, coming from the centurion, he says, speak. <laughs> Just say the word. Did you catch the play on words with word there? Just say the word. The irony is he is speaking to the word when he says, say the word. John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Jesus is the word, and the centurion is speaking to Jesus who is the word, and he says, just say the word, because I know you command these things, and when you command them, they happen because of your leadership. Leadership can be tricky. I had on my SPRC at my former church a retired chief master sergeant. I don't know if you know how high of a rank a chief master sergeant is. I suspect most of you do. He's enlisted. Now here's where it's very tricky. We were taught at the Citadel that Okay, as a second lieutenant, you technically outrank a chief master sergeant. But only technically. Technically, the chief master sergeant is required to salute a second lieutenant who just got out of college. So imagine being in the military for 30 years, and maybe you don't have to imagine, maybe you know, and you're a chief master sergeant and a second lieutenant who just graduated college and still calls his mommy every other weekend, passes you by, and you're supposed to salute him. What we were told as second lieutenants is, yes, he's required to salute you, but you actually better raise your hand first. out of respect for his command and his leadership and his experience. Turns out a chief master sergeant is so accustomed to having people do what he says do that when he serves on the staff parish relations committee, he expects the pastor to do exactly what he says to do. And we actually became very good friends. But it took several years for that to happen. But this is exactly what we're talking about with the centurion. He knows what it means to give a command and it be followed. And in the military, you give a command, 
there's really not any expectation that it will not be followed. In other words, you can fully expect that it's going to happen or there are going to be consequences. Because trust is of utmost importance. If you go into battle and you tell people to take the hill, <laughs> you have to know that the people are going to do what you commanded them to do. Because if they don't, then the rest are relying on them doing their job. You've got one person coordinating. You have to do what is said. And this is what the centurion is saying to Jesus. I know. When you speak, it happens. In Malcolm Gladwell's book, David and Goliath, it tells a story about the Brownsville neighborhood in New York City where Joanne Jaffe took over as head of the city's housing bureau. She was responsible for the projects. She created a juvenile robbery intervention program. The problem is that no one in the projects trusted the police or anyone in authority. The reason they didn't trust the police or anyone in authority is because the, their perception was that the only time they saw the police or the only time they saw anyone in authority is when someone had done something wrong and they were looking to find out who it was and take them away. So Ms. Jaffe, she, at Thanksgiving, bought a bunch of turkeys and went from apartment to apartment giving them turkeys. That's kind of a strange thing to do. But when she gave him the turkey, she said, I, I understand that when you see authority, you assume something punitive. But we want you to understand that we genuinely want you to have a happy Thanksgiving. In other words, there was an expression of compassion and love and caring. Now, I'm now supposed to tell you that that turned the entire community around and everything was hunky-dory. Well, that is not the case. However, juvenile robbery decreased by 85%. 85% is pretty good. When, when I was in college, that's what I shot for, 85%. <laughs> it actually goes back to the old saying of, of leadership. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And that is absolutely true. Um, I made a mistake when I, when I first got here. I actually made several mistakes, but one of them I'm going to tell you about. The rest of them I'm going to keep to myself. Um, when I first got here, the SPRC said, well, now we've, we've hired Dick full-time as the um, associate pastor in charge of visitation, and your duties are this, these. Okay. So I didn't, I didn't do any visiting when I got here because it's your job. After about a year or two, people started complaining, well, Webb doesn't care about the, our shut-ins and our hospitalized. And he doesn't ever come to see us. That was never my intention. I thought I was doing what had been established. Now that I know that that's the expectation, I'm going to come see you. I'm warning you is what I'm doing. I'm letting you know ahead of time I'm coming to see you. But the perception that I didn't care because I didn't come see you, um, that, that's hurtful 
to me, and I, I see how it would be hurtful to you. That was never the intention. It was my misunderstanding. And for that, I apologize. The other stuff wasn't my fault. <laughs> it matters that people know that you care. We make two mistakes when it comes to our authority in Christ when trying to establish relationships with people. We either demand that people follow the rules, but we never show that we care for them, which causes them to balk and to resist. Or we show compassion and caring to them, but we never follow up with telling them about the grace that comes from a relationship with Jesus Christ. So we either pound them with the rules or we give them free stuff without explaining the relationship with Christ. Either way is a failure. There are still rules that must be followed, but you can't lead with those. We must care. And then in the process of caring for people, explain what it means to live in a relationship with Jesus that is gracious. This is how we have the authority in Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit to change people's lives. So whether you're a chief master sergeant or private in Christ's army. Acknowledge who's the, th the authority and see how we can most effectively reach people, not just by doing what we're comfortable with, but doing what we're called to. Let's pray. God, you are gracious and wonderful, and we are thankful. We have a tendency sometimes to assume that everyone knows about this relationship we have with you. And they do not. Help us to be compassionate to people and enable them to see that we really do care and we really do love them. But also to follow up with, this is what a relationship in Christ looks like. These are the guidelines that we live by. Lord, make us faithful Christians, those who are Christ-like. Give us compassion and faithfulness, and we ask this in Christ's name. Amen. You stand together and let's sing, He Leadeth Me.
together in the historic confession of our Christian faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence you shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. God, as we now accept these tithes and offerings for you, we pray that as a church, you would give us your wisdom in using these funds, um, that they would be used for your glory. And we ask these things in Christ's name. Amen.
All right, good morning, everybody. If I can get my kiddos to come down here, kindergarten through fifth grade, if you can just sit on the floor right here, and you can kind of look up at the stage, so you can, here, you can sit on the floor right there and look at me. Oh, perfect. Good morning, everybody. All right. Okay. Ugh. So we've been talking about this question of who is God, right? And we've been learning that God is our creator and our king. Last week, we were talking about Noah. And after, after Noah and his family came out from the ark, God gave them a command. And that command was to multiply and to scatter all over the earth. Well, do you think that the people obeyed? No, they did not obey. They all decided to stick together, and they settled in this one little area. Now, that wasn't, that wasn't obeying God. And so when they, they gathered in this one area, they decided, hmm, we are going to build a very tall tower so people will look at us. Now, is it a bad thing to build a tower? Just to build a tower, right? We have really tall towers, and people live in them and work in them. It's not a bad thing. But if we want to build a tower to bring glory to ourselves, do you think God would be very happy with that? Mm-mm. So they were building this tall tower, and everybody spoke the same language. But then God says this in chapter 11 of Genesis. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower that people were building. The Lord said, if as one people speaking the same language they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so they will not understand each other. So I'm going to do a little test. If anybody speaks Spanish in here, I am so sorry. The last Spanish class I took was about 11 years ago, so I'm really going to try my hardest. All right, so I'm going to have you try to guess what I'm saying. Are we ready? If I ask for a bolso, do you know what a bolso is? Nice try. It's actually a bag. Oh, man. All right, what about los dolces? If I ask for los dolces, do you know what that would be? What is it? Doritos. Doritos. That's a good answer. But it's actually candy. Candy. Los dulces is candy. If I were to ask for a lapis, do you know what a lapis is? A lockpick. You are you're coming up with some good answers, but it's actually a pencil. Yeah. All right. Let's see. What about a basso? If I were to ask for a basso, do you know what that is? Close, a bottle, it's a cup. All right, let's see. Habon, do you know what habon would be? Carbon fiber. Carbon fiber. <laughs> nice, it's actually soap. <laughs> soap, all right. And last one, let's see. Quaderno. Does anybody know what a quaderno would be? Cards. It's a notebook. Do you see how difficult that is? If I were to start talking to you in Spanish, would you have any idea what I was saying? Your brother would? Does he know Spanish? I used to know Spanish a little bit better, but not anymore. So that's what, that's what God did. So they were all speaking one language, just like we all speak English. But then one day, God said, we're going we're gonna to change up the language. And so they all spe started speaking different languages. And if I started, oh, we would all be so confused. So what do you think happened with the building of the tower? It stopped. And then what did the people do? They scattered all over the earth, finally doing what God asked them to do. And so they had their different languages, and they were speaking in all over the world. But what we learn from this is, is we don't reach up to God, right? We're not going to build this giant tower to reach up to God. God actually reaches down to us. And do you know how God reached down to us? He sent Jesus to us. So we don't have to build, and we're not going to bring glory to ourselves. God reached down to us in Jesus. And did you know that, you know, back in the day, God scattered everybody. But did you know that one day Jesus is going to bring everybody back together? And when we get to heaven, we're going to have people from all different countries and tribes and nations and languages all coming back together to worship God forever. Aren't you so excited for that day? Can you imagine what heaven's going to be like when we're all speaking different languages, but we're all worshiping the same God? How cool is that going to be? All right. So you guys did an amazing job listening. Thank you so much for all of your guesses. Those were really, really good guesses. All right. So since you were listening so well, I got a little treat for you. 
so you can take your treat and you can take it back. Ask your grown-up if you're able to eat it. I don't want to get you in trouble. All right, thank you guys. Maddie, it just so happens that uh, sitting in the choir and who did such a beautiful job with the special music, taught Spanish at Malden High School. How did she do? She gave you a thumbs up on your pronunciation. So you always got to be careful. You don't know who's sitting here, do you? Yeah. Prayer concerns this morning, uh, Webb received word from Bruce McIntyre that June is uh, June McIntyre has been placed in the hospital this morning uh, in very, very uh, critical condition. Uh, oxygen levels just dangerously low. Uh, some blood clots they found. So uh, June is very, very sick this morning. And so we will definitely uh, keep her in our prayers. Uh, Earl Alexander, uh, you know, Earl has been suffering for some time with an open wound on his elbow. And uh, this past week, they uh, re-stitched it together, and, uh, but he's facing the possibility they may have to go back in and clean it out a, a third or fourth time. And so please pray for Earl. Uh, others on our list are Dennis Bennett, Pat and Brenda King, Lynn Waldrop, Ruth Armstrong, David Bebecki, Faye Stroman, Liz Cox, Caroline Jarvis, Fred Scott, Vicki and Lewis Switzer, Landon Clark, Latori Jimson, Mark Johnson, Levi Holmes, and Claudine Alexander. Uh, Long-term care members are Doug and Ginger Vaughn, Sally Walden, and Linda Welburn. Uh, on our prayer list uh, that came in this weekend, uh, Livy Brookshire is a, a granddaughter of a friend of June Jones, uh, a 15-year-old girl who had a stroke on Saturday. Uh, Lila Childs, Bill Flint, Ralph Smith and Linda Page, Terry Porter, Frank Alexander. And uh, we got word on Friday that Kathy Wilson, whose sister to Stan Bagwell and Vicki Switzer, who's been on a, a ventilator for three weeks with COVID, was removed from the ventilator and is breathing on her own and doing well, recovering, still in the hospital. We continue to pray for our country and our leaders. And we give thanks that there is murmuring before church and that slowly but surely we are coming back. And we give God the glory for that. Let's pray together. Father, you are the living word, the word made flesh and dwelt among us, the word who can speak a word and bring forth miracles. God, we pray for ourselves this morning that we remind ourselves and relearn that lesson that you are still in the miracle business. You still do miraculous things in our lives. And we pray this morning that our trust in you grows. That we resist that temptation to work things out on our own. Resist the temptation to depend on ourselves and our abilities. but to always go back into the arms and the grace of the Word. So this morning we give you thanks for Christ Jesus. And as we journey through Lent and we, we study the power of the Gospels, let us always join those two together that our need for repentance and restoration only comes through that power. And that we never, never walk away from it. 
So God, on behalf of these whose names we called, we pray to the one whom the centurion recognized. as the one who could speak and bring healing and restoration. So on behalf of these, our friends and family, we ask that you do that. And be with us as we continue our journey, leading leading us to that glorious resurrection day. So we pray together this morning in the power of the one who taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. So just a few announcements for you all. A reminder that our Club 45 and our middle school gathering are going to be meeting at 5 p.m. tonight again. And that's going to be followed by our high school gathering at 6.30 p.m. And our youth are also encouraged to register for a workday at Asbury Hills. And this is going to be on Saturday, March 13th. Um, And this is going to be a pretty full day of work, but it's going to be a good time. And we'll get a light breakfast before we leave, and we'll also get fed lunch there as well. Um, So please register on Realm for that uh, by next Sunday if you can. We also want to give a shout out to Craig Tucker and all our volunteers who gave us a great basketball season, and we're already looking forward to next year. And lastly, uh, as you all know, we are now in the season of Lent, and we'd like to invite you all to our photo a day challenge on social media. Um, This is just to help us reflect on a different word each day uh, through the Lenten season. And today's word, I believe, is celebrate. Um, So let's continue to celebrate as we conclude worship this morning. It's it's interesting that the topic of speaking Spanish came up today because we have um, our our missionaries used to be with Cadence in Germany. Um, They now are going to Spain. What's the new organization? Nova. Nova. Um, and I apologize, it's going to take me a little while to learn that. Um, but the Campbells, Jeff and Candy, are going to be leaving for Spain March the 1st. Um, leaving for Chicago March the 1st, the 10th. Basically. Leaving for Chicago March the 1st, and then leave for Spain on the 10th. Um, if, if you guys would come up here, if you don't mind. We are, because they represent us, they, and they are our missionaries. We don't own them or anything, but, you know... Um, We'd like to pray for them this morning. So if you would, please stand. Now, under normal circumstances, go ahead and stand up. Under normal circumstances, I'd have you lay your hands on them. Um, But obviously, that's not possible. So what I'd like for you to do is hold out your hand, like you're putting your hand on them. Holy God, we thank you for Jeff and Candy. We thank you for the amazing work that you've already done through them. And we thank you for the work that you're going to do through them. Grant them your grace and your love and your presence. Grant them your safety. Um, Grant them a peace uh, that passes all understanding, especially with, with children here and them being there. Um... Some of your children are going with you, though, right? Nope. Wow. Um, God, grant them your peace. Give them the assurance that what they do matters um, and that lives would be changed. 
We ask these things in Jesus' name, and we give you the glory for this answered prayer. And we ask this in Christ's name. Amen. God bless you. Can I take a picture of that? Uh, that absolutely. This will encourage my heart. Hold your hands back up like, just like you were. Okay, all of those willing to serve next year on a committee. <laughs> Thank you, guys. God bless you. May, remain standing. May our faith in, in Christ be ever evident each and every day, and may others see it in us. And may we never tire of sharing the story and the love of Jesus Christ in our lives. So we're all missionaries every single day proclaiming him. I love to tell the story, and I hope you do too. Let's sing our closing hymn this morning. out the pew this way this side will go out this door and this side out that door you are welcome to socialize in the parking lot but take it outside <laughs> may God go with you his love his grace and his peace from the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit may he be with you right now and forever amen <laughs>